Welcome to Tech World, your quick roundup of some of the top technology news stories from across the globe. This month, we bring you the latest on Qualcomm's mammoth $1.2 billion fine, SoftBank's latest tech investment, and more. For this episode's Hot Topic interview, we spoke to Pragerson Morgan from EY about the upcoming GDPR. First, though, here are your top international stories. Qualcomm, the world's biggest producer of mobile phone chips, has been handed a mammoth $1.2 billion fine by the EU after paying Apple to use its product. The EU's Competition Commission said Qualcomm had prevented its rivals from competing in the market. The chipmaker is looking to appeal the decision after saying in a statement that it strongly disagreed with the decision. Japanese conglomerate SoftBank has backed used car marketplace Auto One Group to the tune of 460 million euros, the investment of which approximately half will be made through the issues of new shares, values a Berlin-based company at 2.9 billion euros. Auto One Group will use the cash to support its continued growth and to expand overseas. Google CEO Sundar Pichai discussed the tech giant's investment plans in France in a blog post this month. First, Google will be expanding its office in Paris, acquiring or renting other buildings around its current space and connecting them. The move will see the tech behemoth take up an additional 6,000 square meters of office space to house 1,000 employees in the French capital. Perhaps most significantly though, Google said it was also going to create a new AI research facility. The firm will also create Google hubs with local partners around France, starting with Rennes and with three other locations due to be announced soon. Over in the US, Facebook is reportedly buying Boston-based software company Confirm, specializing in authenticating government-issued ID cards. A source close to the acquisition told Reuters that Confirm, which claims to have over 750 clients on its website, will begin winding down its operations and its employees will join Facebook in Boston. The terms of the acquisition have not yet been disclosed and it's not known how the tech giant is looking to apply the company's technology. What we do know though is that Facebook had previously said it would boost its plans to verify the identities of people who purchase election-related ads on its network. That's it for our top global tech news roundup, but keep watching to see this episode's Hot Topics interview. We spoke with Pragerson Morgan from EY about GDPR. Hi Pragas, and thank you very much for joining us. So you're here to talk to us about GDPR. Now, what exactly is it? So GDPR stands for the General Data Protection Regulation, um, and it is a regulation that is European Union-wide. Um, the main focus of the legislation is on you and me, actually. It's about the, um, the individual, so protecting individual rights. Most importantly, with the rise of the way data has been shared uh, in organizations and the rise of multinationals being able to use those pieces of data in any way, shape or form. This legislation is here to protect the individual in such a way that you have to give consent for that information to be used, so to be collected, to be stored and then to be processed. So fundamentally, this is the biggest shakeup in the marketplace on, on legislation over IT, over data and that legislation is called the Gender, General Data Protection Regulation. comes into play on the 25th of May um, 2018 and businesses have had two years to get ready for this so this legislation has been hanging about for the last two years. So what exactly are the implications for businesses here in the UK? So I think there's a number of things businesses will need to consider. The first of that is that this is a shake-up of the market in relation to legislation. So most importantly the organization needs to be really clear about the data that it collects about individuals and this legislation is focused around living individuals. It needs to make sure that there's good corporate governance around that, the way they collect it, the way they process it, the way they store it and then the way they transfer it to third parties. So making sure that they have controls around that. The second thing is they need to be very clear about risk and risk management around that data. So most importantly is what are the risks when I collect the data, what are the risks when I process the data and what are the risks if I transfer the data outside the European Union for example. So whilst the legislation is focused around covering the European Union citizens, mm -hmm. most importantly organisations have to really take ownership over control of that information and the data that they collect and the burden is on them to protect that information. So in terms of all the like, prevalence of data that we have at the moment, how can businesses prepare in terms of recruiting the right people into their business? Because the legislation is focused around the controls that you'd have in place around personal sensitive data and the way it flows across the organisation, what we are seeing 
is an evolution of roles and skills that you'd have in the organization. So whilst I might have had somebody that was focused around protection of information, being in information security, right now I'm looking at an individual that has to have oversight of the data as we see it flowing right across the organization. So what we've seen is the emergence of the chief data marketing officer, for example. But we're also seeing um, a, a strong demand in the market for a chief privacy officer or a data protection officer. At the moment, the market's short. Um, our own benchmarking tells us the market across Europe is short by 33,000 uh, data protection officer jobs. And so there's this whole narrative around Brexit as well, but am I right in thinking that whatever happens, whether we stay in or out, like businesses in the UK will still have to comply regardless? We've had a number of these questions around Brexit um, previously, and especially with the uncertainty uh, as we go into Brexit, um, the question's always being asked, what happens to the UK? What happens to the data of a large multinational that is flowing right across the European Union? So right now we know um, that the UK is going through a change in its data legislation. It's currently making the assent through Parliament, mm -hmm. uh, and that was announced uh, a couple of months ago, and Elizabeth Denham, who's the UK ICO, is quite vocal about that. What we do know is that whilst the UK comes out of the European Union, and what, whilst that date is set, there'll still be a transition period, actually, that will go probably for two years, where we will still have to harmonise with European Union um, legislation. Mm -hmm. One of those legislations will be GDPR. So in our current uh, bill that's making its ascent through Parliament, GDPR is written into that. So the UK will have to comply with GDPR. How the UK will work with the European Union beyond that uh, time period, we're unsure of um, just yet. What we are expecting is that the UK would become a white-listed country or a white-listed territory, in which case we can still share data uh, across the European Union. So what advice would you give to people watching this video in terms of preparing their business for the upcoming regulation? So probably three key pieces of advice I would give an organisation. The first is absolutely be certain about the types of data that you're collecting in the organisation. If you're collecting personal sensitive data, make sure that you understand where it's collected, where it's stored and where it's processed. So that's the first one. Understanding the scope of this and uh, the legislation and whether or not you apply to that. The second is, if I do collect personal sensitive data, what sort of risks do, do the, does the organization have as a result of the data that it collects, processes mm -hmm. and stores uh, and even transfers? Once I understand those risks, the next thing I need to do is to make sure that I have controls around that, either mitigating controls or direct controls in place that would stop that data being lost. Uh, and then quite a, quite a bit of this is making sure that if I'm collecting things like personal sensitive data in the organization, there is the, the legitimate grounds for processing of that information. So you'd need to have consent of the individual to, to collect it, to store it, to process it. Great, well thank you so much for your time, Ferguson. Thank you. That's all for this episode. For more of the latest top headlines, head over to www.uktech.news.